All right, guys. So we're going to kind of quickly go through this, a recapping of what we did yesterday. Um, so here we have rational expressions that we're simplifying, right? And we talked about in order to simplify, you want to factor your numerator and your denominator. Then you eliminate common term, common factors. I'm sorry, not terms, common factors. And then you state the restriction on the denominator, right? Okay, so that's what we're doing. So when we look at what we have here, our numerator, this is going to be an example of how would I factor this? Exactly. What multiplies, it's a simple. So what multiplies to give me negative 8, but adds to give me negative 2. We know it's a simple because your leading coefficient is cast with a friendly 1. Okay. So we need a negative 4 and a positive 2. Okay. How do we feel so far? Okay, the denominator, the denominator is not simple. It is a complex, okay? And when you have complex, that means you need your X. So the X, go to the X. Okay, so we need the X. So we have three times negative four is negative 12. And what is our middle term? Four. So we're asking ourselves what multiplies to give us negative 12, but adds to give us four. So what? We need a what? Say it again. Positive six and negative two. It's A times C. Okay. Huh? Yes, in your box. Yes. First box, first term, last box, last term. So in our first box is our first term, which is 3x squared. And the last box is our last term, which is negative 4. x marks the spot of what fills in. So we have 6x and negative 2x. Once I'm in the box, what am I doing? The GCF all the way around, right? So what is the GCF? of the first row? 1x. 1x. What's the GCF of the second row? 2. What's the GCF of the first column? What's the GCF of the last column? Negative 2. So my factors for my denominator are going to be x plus 2 and 3x minus 2. Do we see that? Okay, um, I'm going to say tutorials is needed. Yes. It doesn't matter which one you, nope, does not matter. Wherever you put the X's, it does not matter. It's going to come out the same. Yep, good question. All right, so after we have factor, now we do what? Eliminate. So what can be eliminated? X plus 2 and X plus 2, right? Because it's in the numerator and in the denominator. So we're left with 3X minus 2. Okay. What is our restriction? What can X not equal? Your restriction is based off of your... <clears throat> Denominator. Oh. What would make my denominator equal to zero is what you're asking. I heard two thirds. Yes. Who said? Yes. So if I have three X minus two equal to zero, I would add two, right? And I'm left with three X equals two. Is X by itself? No. So I would have to add three. So my restriction is two thirds. So that would be my final answer. Okay, x minus four over three x minus two and the restriction is x cannot equal two over three. All right, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna be walking around. I want you to do number five, okay? All right, so um, in your numerator, you should have used greatest common factor in your denominator, you should have used complex, right? So GCF is 
three, and we're left with x. I forgot my two. My two x plus five. Yes. Okay. The denominator. We're gonna use our complex. So two times negative five is negative ten. The bottom is the middle, and we get three. So when multiplied to give you negative ten, but add it to give you three. There we go. We had a five and a negative two. Okay. Remember your box. Your box is your first term and last term. These are your terms. So we have 2x squared and we have negative 5. The other boxes come from your x's. So we have 5x and negative 2x. They came from my x, so they have an x. Negative 2x. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the GCF here is 2x. The GCF here is 5. The GCF here is x and the gcf here is negative one if your outer box is negative then your gcf is going to be negative just like in if it were parentheses if your leading term is negative your gcf is negative right so we're left with two, x minus one so what goes away our two x plus five so our final is and what's our restriction Perfect. How'd we do? That wasn't, wasn't bad? Uh, it would be an asymptote, exactly. It would make it equal to zero. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in terms of what we've learned, this would be an asymptote, this would be a whole because I removed it, right? What's removable is a whole, What's not removable is your asymptote, okay? Good question and statement. All right, so I'm going to do the two variable with you just to show you that it's the same. So in this case, we have X and Y. We can still apply our factoring strategies for X and Y. These are both perfect squares that are being subtracted. So I can still apply difference of two squares, right? These are two terms that have things in common. So I can still apply GCF. Did we see that? So the factors of my numerator are going to be x minus y times x plus y. Wait, how do you know that chocolate is one? Because they're perfect squares that are being subtracted. My denominator, what's my GCF? 6x. Six. Six x. And when I factor out 6x, I'm left with 1x and 1y. So now we can eliminate, and when we eliminate, our x plus y's go away, and we're left with over 6x. What can x not equal? Yes. Zero. 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 x can't equal zero, because 6 times zero is zero. Okay. You're factoring? Zero. But that's zero. Over yeah, that's fine. Which last part? Um, we started about the like how it how it can't zero. Um, remember you can't have zero in the denominator. It is okay for zero to be in the numerator because zero divided by anything is zero. But it is no go for zero to be in the denominator because there's nothing that you can that will produce this. So that's why this is zero because six X equals zero means X has to be zero in order for that to be true. It's still a water. Yeah. All right. Okay. So that concludes your part A, right?